on the last uh, uh, session we had uh, we had studied up to this point tad vidhi paripatena pariprashnena sevaya upadakshanti te gyanam gyanina tattva darshana so it said that uh, you know when you come to the master with uh, you know by bowing down before him and uh, uh, you uh, you question him you question him about the about the knowledge of the self about the path by which you can uh, you can uh, uh, the path by which you you can undergo by which you can uh, you can attain the knowledge of the self or or the truth and while you do that while you bow down before him with respect with regards with faith and uh, then only he starts uh, you know he starts to speak he starts to advise you and uh, with his advice uh, your you know your ignorance is eradicated your ignorance is completely you know like is is completely nullified and the knowledge which is you know which is within you the inner knowledge that is within you it uh, it reveals itself and that is what we we know as self realization when you you know when you realize that you are not this body that you thought about or you are not this mind or the thoughts or the intellect or anything you know which you perceive in this world or beyond anything which is you know uh, which is physical or mental or whatever you know you are not not any of that you are the self you are uh, you are consciousness so this is this knowledge is attained when you are in you know when you are here you are uh, you know when you uh, e e when the ignorance is gone and then the knowledge is revealed so this was the last uh, shloka uh, where we were in our last session now we are going forward he says so he says that you know while you while this knowledge is revealed to you when you go to a master and when, when you bow down before him with faith and when you ask him about the self and about the path which you need to partake to realize the self when you go and bow down before the master the master delivers you the uh, the knowledge of the self and this knowledge of the self when revealed unto you into your heart or or it flows into your mind when this knowledge is revealed then you don't go back to that point where you did not have this knowledge when you were completely when you were deluded when you thought that you are one of this world you are you know a product of this world you are the body or you are this mind you know that that part is not going to come back again though you are you will be acting as if you are the same person you know you are going to do all the works that you you used to do in your you know uh, in the days you know prior to become uh, wise or prior to become the self uh, self you know enlightened soul but you will never have that mind which did not know about itself which did not know about its own existence its real existence so you will always you know do whatever you do whatever you do you will always know that you are the self and then it says that you know uh, not only this not only this you will see in every aspect of this world in every you know individual of this world in every being and non being of this world it's me it's one it's unity it's one you know you may, you might say it is me or it is you or it is he or it is she whatever it is it is one so this knowledge will not only you know remove your ignorance and say that you are not the body and you are you are the soul 
it is not going to do that alone. You know, with this knowledge, you will also know that everything of this world, either it is living or non-living, it is sentient or insentient. These all are, you know, these all are conscious. These all are conscious. The Lord resides within everything. Nothing is false. Nothing is untrue. Nothing is dead. Nothing is non-living. Everything is consciousness. Though it may, might seem to be non-living, but it is that consciousness. So, you know, that is what we are going to know. And then he says, Api chedasi papibhya sarvibhya papakrittama sarvam jnana plave nevam brijinam santarishasi. And, you know, if you are a person who have done a lot of evils, sin, if you're a sinner, if you're a sinner to an extent, you know, of, you know, to a maximum extent, you're a sinner. Still, you know, with this knowledge, all the sins which you might be carrying along with you, they will all be washed away. You will be purified. You will no longer become, remain as a sinner because the sinner is the ego, is the ego. When you, you know, when you, you impose yourself, when you impose yourself or when you, you know, mistake yourself, when you delude yourself to being the ego, that is when you become the sinner. But when you, you know, when your eyes are open and you can see in broad daylight that you are not this ego, you are not this mind, you are the self. When you see this in broad daylight, then you realize that you are not the sinner, you are not, you know, you are, you are neither virtue nor vice. You are not, not, a, not a saint, you are not a sinner. You are, you know, you're beyond all this. So, you know, that is what it says, that whatever sin you might, you might have performed, you might have performed sins to the extreme limit, but after realizing the self, you know, the sins does not remain, you become free from all sins. Now it says, Yathei dhangshi samit dhagno bhashmashat kurute arjuna jnanagni sarva karmani bhashmashat kurute tatha. This is one of the very important verses of Bhagavad Gita. It says that, have you seen the fire? It burns all the wood, whatever wood it comes, you know, in contact, of, in contact with the fire, the fire burns them. Now you, you're from Australia, you, you might be knowing what is called burning, you know, you have seen, you know, your forests burn every year. So, you know, it says that, you know, whatever wood comes in contact with fire, the fire burns everything. In the same way, jnanagni sarva karmani bhashmashat kurute tatha. In this way, Gyan Agni, the fire of knowledge. Knowledge is compared to be fire because it burns all ignorance. Now it says the fire of knowledge burns all karmas, that is actions. Why, what does it mean? What does it mean that the fire of knowledge burns all karmas? Here karma, you know why Krishna has had mentioned this word karma? Because karma is performed. Karma means the actions that we do in our day-to-day -day life. The actions that we, that we perform in our day-to-day -day life, they are performed to fulfill our needs, to fulfill our necessities. That means we have necessities, we have desires. We have necessities, we have desires, we have shortfall. And that is why we have this urge to work to work, to perform work, to perform actions. We perform actions because we need to, you know, fulfill our crisis. We need to fulfill our deficit. Now, here it says, Jnanagni Sarva Karmani Bhashmashat Kurute Tatha. It says the knowledge, that the fire of knowledge, it, the fi fire of knowledge burns all the, all the, all the, you know, uh, the fire of knowledge burns all the 
uh, you know, all the karmas. So what does it mean? It means the, the you know, when the, when the knowledge is revealed to you, when the knowledge, when the knowledge of the self is revealed to you, then you realize that you, you know, you are fulfilled. You're always fulfilled. You don't have any crisis. You don't have any shortfall, you know? And when you realize this, then you attain completeness. Then you attain fulfillment. And when you attain fulfillment, then you don't need to work. But does it mean that a person who has realized the self, he does not need to work? No, he works. But because he has known his self, he has known the truth, he does not work for himself because he knows that every being is me. So he cannot separate himself from others. He cannot separate himself from others. And that is why he, you know, whenever he works, he does not work for himself. He works for the benefit of everybody. He works for, so his work becomes a, you know, a, a universal work. It does not, it does not remain as a, as an, as a, you know, as a purpose of, of fulfilling his individual necessities, his individual, you know, uh, crisis. He, he works for humanity. So that is what it says, Jnanagni Sarva Karmani Bhashmashat Kurute Tatha. Jnanagni means the, the fire of knowledge. It burns all the, you know, all the karmas. All the karmas means the purpose of karma. What is the purpose of karma? The purpose of karma is to, you know, remove the crisis, is to remove the shortfall. Now, after I have realized the self, I know that I don't have any crisis. I don't have any shortfall. I don't have any, you know, longings. I'm always fulfilled. And that is why, you know, the knowledge has burned all the karmas in me. I don't need to do any karma. I don't need to do any karma. Means I don't need to do any karma for my own benefit. I do perform karma. That karma is for others. So that is what it says. That yathai dhangshi samit dhagno bhashma shat kurute arjuna jnanagni sarva karmani bhashma shat kurute tatha this is one of the very you know famous uh, verses of 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 the bhagavad gita and then it says nahi jnane na sadrisham pavitram iha vidyate tat swayam yoga sansiddha kale natmani vindati it says you know arjun there is nothing as pure as knowledge knowledge is like fire you know like fire whatever it comes in contact it burns it burns you know the, the the fire does not you know transform itself into that object the fire transforms that object into fire and that is why you know the fire does not you know does not lose loses its property by you know coming in in contact with anything it does not lose its property and that is why fire is the most you know purest thing so here it says you know the most purest thing in this world is knowledge knowledge is even more pure purer than fire why because you know whatever comes in contact with knowledge the knowledge does not you know the knowledge does not transform the knowledge retains its identity. The knowledge retains its, its integrity. It does not change. It does not, it's changeless. It does not moderate. It does not transform. It's the same constant. So, you know, it says, Nahi jnanena sadrisham pavitram iha vidyate. There is nothing as pure, as pure, as divine as this knowledge. But is it possible to know it now? It says, no, it's not possible. You know, when you, have, when you have realized the knowledge, you don't realize what you have actually realized. You know, with time, with experience of this knowledge, you know, when you, when you, you have the knowledge in your, in your grip, you don't realize what you, have, what you have actually gained, what you have actually, you know, uh, you know attained. So, Slowly, slowly, with the experience of this knowledge, 
then you realize that you have you have actually you know you have actually gained the best thing in this world the purest thing in this world and that is why it says tat swayam yoga sansiddha you know it's like sun it cannot be proved it proves itself it's luminous it cannot be lightened it's it's light itself it cannot be manifested it's it's you know it's it's manifested it's it's manifestation it's just manifestation so here this knowledge also cannot be proved cannot be known cannot be you know cannot be manifested cannot be proved it is it is its proof it is its proof itself it is its existence itself it is its manifestation itself so it cannot be you know it does not need to be you know it does not need to be proved it does not need to be you know uh, to be manifested it is manifestation it is existence and that is what it says sa tat swayam yoga sansiddha it manifests itself on its own but kale nath mani bindyati but you need time to realize what you have realized you need time to actually know what you have known it is though you have known it but you know all of a sudden at once you cannot know everything about it you need some time you know slowly slowly gradually this is going to be clear to you then it says this is also one of the very you know important shlokas of spiritual world it says shraddhavan lavate gyanam tat para sangitendriya gyanam labdha param shanti achirena digachati this is one of the most important you know statements in the spiritual world it says shraddhavan labhate gyanam what is the quality of a human being who wants to get realized who wants to receive this knowledge the only quality a man has to have to receive this knowledge to realize this is faith faith in himself faith in the master faith in the scriptures in the teachings when he has faith in himself when he has faith in the master when he has faith in the teachings then he has realization of the self and that is why it says sraddha vana lavate gyanam sraddha means faith a person who has faith 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 in everything this is the person who actually realizes the self sraddha van lavate gyanam tat para sangitendriya and then one who is very very you know diligent in 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 restraining his his sense objects one is one who restrains his sense of you know one who restrains his senses very diligently this person sadhavan lavate gyanam tat para sangitendriya one person who has faith and a person who is very diligent in restraining his senses this is the person this is the person who attains the who who realizes the self who realizes the self and what does this knowledge of the self give us a person who has faith and a person who has control over his senses this is the person senses or mind this is the person who realizes knowledge now what does what does this knowledge give him gyanam labdha param shanti with this knowledge he attains absolute peace he attains absolute peace achilena digachati this peace which never transforms into sadness it's always remains as peace in any condition in any condition in any time in any moment it always remains as peace it never becomes you know it becomes never becomes restlessness anxiety anxiousness it always remains as peace so it says sadhavana lavate gyanam tat para sanjitendriya gyanam labdha param shanti achire nadigachati this is one of the 
very you know important statements in the spiritual world now it says now it says uh, you, know, you have yes any question so yeah can i just go back to the the retaining senses part i didn't quite understand that bit what what the retain the um but the, the when you were saying about the senses no, restricting the senses. I didn't understand restricting the senses that means you know the senses must work according to your wish. Here, restraining the senses means restraining the mind, you know, controlling the mind or having full control over your mind. That your mind should work according to your wish. You should not work according to the wish of your mind. This you need to be very careful. You know, we work according to the wish of our mind, but we our mind needs to work according to our wish. And if the mind works according to my wish, then only my senses also, they are going to work according to my wish. You know, so if you really want to have, you know, co complete control over your senses, the only thing that you need to do is not to go after the senses, but to go after the mind and restrain it. Make it controlled, make it obey, obey you. And the moment you do it, you see that everything is under control. Okay, so once you do this, you know, once you have faith and once you can have this complete control over your mind and senses, that is the only way or that is the only, you know, only path by which you are going to attain, attain this knowledge. This knowledge is going to give you absolute peace and this peace is not going to go. It's all always, you know, it's always going to stay. You're going to be that. So then it says, if you don't have, if you don't have peace, if you don't have faith, what will happen? It says, Ashraddha sankshayatma binashati. If a person does not have faith, then his life is full of you know, full of delusion. His life is full of confusions. Confu Every time he's confused, he doesn't have faith. His master says, do this. He does not have faith in the master. Scripture says, do this. He does not have faith in the scriptures. Then what will happen? Then what will happen? Sankshatma, he will remain confused. And once he remains confused, then what will happen? Binashati is going to be, you know, he's going to be, he's going to be uh, like uh, Binash. This is going to be destroyed. He's going to be destroyed completely. You know, he he brings he brings you know self destruction. He brings self destruction because he does not have faith in himself. He does not have faith in in the master. He does not have faith in, in the scriptures, in wisdom. And that is why he brings, you know, destruction to himself. These kind of, you know, confused people. These kind of confused people who does not have faith. They do not find peace in this world or in any other world. They don't find peace. They just, you know, move round and round in this world and all the other worlds, you know, they, they just move, but they don't find peace. They don't find peace. They don't find uh, serenity. If you really want that, you need to be, you know, completely, you know, at peace with yourself, have faith. Then it says, how to have this? Yoga, san, yoga sannyasta karmanam. Jnana san, uh, jnana, uh, sanchinna, jnana sanchinna sanshayam atma bantam na karmani nivaddanti dhanam jaya. He said, how is it possible? How is it possible to get rid of all these confusions, stay in this world, do all the activities and attain the state of yoga? Attain the state of knowledge. 
going beyond all confusions, doubts, and you know, and uh, uh, going beyond all confusions and adding the state of knowledge. You know, how to do this? He says, Yoga Sanyasta Karmanam. One who has, you know, who has dedicated all his actions. One who has dedicated all his actions, you know, to the Lord, to the divine. One who has dedicated all the actions to the divine. He does his actions, but he, you know, he, he does those for that divine, that Lord. He does not do actions to fulfill his own interests. He's selfless, surrendered completely, devoted to the highest, you know, highest limit. He's devoted to the highest limit. He is completely faithful. Faithful. Yoga Sanyasta Karmaram, a person who has, you know, who has surrendered devoted all his actions, all his actions to that yoga, to the divine. Jnana Sanchinna Sanshayam, those people who have dedicated all their actions to the, to the divine, their, you know, their confusions, their doubts, their doubts, they are all eradicated. They are all, you know, completely uprooted uprooted. They don't have any doubts at all. They don't have any confusion at all. They don't have any delusion at all. They're all, you know, completely, completely they are assured of everything. All his, you know, all his doubts are uprooted. Atma bantam na karmani nibadhanti dhananjaya. This kind of, this kind of you know, self-realized soul. For this kind of self-realized soul, you know, the karmas, the actions, they don't cause to be a, you know, obstructor, to be an inhibitor. All the, they can do any action, but that will never bind them. They will always remain free. They will always remain free from everything. You know, so that is the that is the best way to live in this world. How to live in this world? Yoga san, san yoga sannyasta karmanam. You should dedicate all your actions to the divine. Jnana san chinna san shayam. And you know, and then only all your delusions, all your all your you know, all your delusions, they'll all be uprooted by by knowledge. Atmabantam na karmani nivadhanti dhananjaya. Oh, dhananjaya, you know, these, these, you know, self realized soul. Just one, one is left. I want to finish it, you know, this year so that when you go to the next year, we start with the fifth chapter. <laughs> we, you know, start fresh chapter, you know, not the same thing again and again. <laughs> So it says that Atmamadam na karmani nivadhanti dhananjaya. Oh, dhananjaya. You know, this kind of self realized soul, for this kind of self realized soul, for this kind of self realized soul, any karma that he performs does not create any, any, you know, hurdle, does not create any bondage. He does not have any bondage. Okay. Now the last one. Verse number 42. Tasmat jnana sambhutam hritsang jnana sinat mana chitvenam sangshayam yogam tishto tishta bharata. He said, that is why, that is why I'm telling you, O son of Bharat, O son of this great land, Bharat, Bharat you know, tasmat jnana sambhutam hritsam Jnana Sinatmana. That is why I'm telling you, you know, uh, establish this knowledge. Behold this knowledge. Behold this knowledge in your heart. Behold this knowledge in your heart and become that knowledge completely. 
behold this knowledge i am the self this is the knowledge i am the self you know behold this knowledge within you in your heart and become that when you say this i am the self be the self don't have any confusion don't have any doubt oh well i it may be or it, no no maybe there's no maybe there's no ifs there's no buts this very you know it's completely totally assured of this i'm completely assured of this that i am yes i am that i am that then chitvainam sanshayam yogam tishto tishta bharata and while doing this you know uproot all your ignorance all your vice all your you know uh, all your distractions and be firm in the self be firm on truth be firm on, on the self om tat sadati shivam bhagavad gita shu upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjun sanvade jnana yoga nama chatutta adhyaya hari hi om tat sat om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnash purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi so this is the end of the fourth chapter thank you very much wow <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> we did it that's amazing okay. this is turning to a very epic thing the bhagavad yeah. gita It's become very epic for us um so chapter 4 brilliant so we start the new year um with chapter 5 5 and the and the fifth chapter is called sanyas yoga you know the ah. yoga sanyas the yoga wow. okay sorry what was it called yeah. yoga of sanyas sanyas yoga and sanyas so thank you swam you guys have had all your holidays we wish you well over our holiday season thank you so much you thank you so much have a thank very you so much uh, christmas have a wonderful thank you very much you too. and uh, a very good thank new year you. we'll be in touch yeah and you too and the uh, indian cricket team is in australia now yes yeah somehow we lost the one day series but uh, <laughs> unfortunately we won the you know t20 uh, series you know i India. love t20 I'll i go think you from guys. tomorrow day after tomorrow there is a test you know there will be five day test yeah you'll be okay yeah. hey this one this one loves like serious love of cricket like he's a great cricketer himself they have a tell us he's indian they all love yeah. cricket david says it's on thursday <laughs> it is he has a television <laughs> <in the morning. laughs> And they sit there watching the cricket. It's fantastic. I love it. I've been lucky enough to enjoy that with them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very okay, much. So, thank you. Namaste. Good night. Namaste. Uh, good night.